Hi, this is a video to show off uh, what I consider to be the publishing workflow for Better Shaders. Um, so essentially there's two assets involved here. One is Better Shaders to actually write shaders that will work across different pipelines and the other is my shader packager which allows you to deliver the results of those shaders to users who do not have Better Shaders or you can actually write them in any uh, program you want but it lets you deliver a single shader file that contains all the SRP versions and uh, acts as a single shader file to the user uh, but works on whichever SRP they happen to be working on. So let's get started. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is create a new shader here and I'm just going to create a really simple shader. Let's make a minimal shader here and I'm just going to call this uh, tint. I'm going to call it tint dev. And the reason I'm calling it dev is so that I know which ones are my better shader source files and which ones are the shipping shaders that I'm going to ship to users. Now, I would encourage you to ship your better shader source as well because then they can stack shaders and all kinds of cool stuff with it if they have better shaders. But obviously, not everybody on the store is going to have uh, my shader system as much as I wish they did. So let's just open up tint dev here. And we have a very simple... Uh, shader here which just has a color. So let's go ahead and first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to begin subshaders and end subshaders. And I'm going to bring in the lit shader. And we can do that very easily uh, just by lit base dev dot uh, surf shader. So we're just going to subshader that in, which means we're going to get all of its capabilities right away. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just multiply uh, the albedo from that lit shader uh, by the color that we have here. And now we've created a little uh, tint shader. So that compiles and we could go ahead and we can create a material here and test it. And we can see here we get this uh, shader UI uh, that I have for the albedo, uh, I mean for the uh, lit shader, and I can go ahead and, and give it a texture and a normal, and then here's our uh, color property that we added, and we can go ahead and change that and see that it tints it. Um, so we want to ship though in a way that doesn't require them to use our better shaders. So let's go ahead and get rid of this material, and let's set that up. Uh, so below this directory, I have a non-dev version of these shaders. And what I'm going to do is create a new shader package. So you go over here and you create a shader package. And we're going to name this Tint. And notice that doesn't have the dev connotation. And then what we're going to do is just select our Tint dev shader here in the better shader slot. And we're going to go ahead and let's give this a different name so that we can find it. Shader pack uh, tint. And let's go ahead and pack this. And what this will do, will it will grab all the generated shader variants it needs for all the render pipelines, uh, standard included. And it will suck it into this entries um, display here. And you can see it's actually pulled in the shader source for those different shaders. And then if we hit apply, this will go ahead and create a shader. And so now we have a tint shader. And we can just go create a material for this. Um, material. And let's create a little uh, sphere here. Let me just duplicate this guy. <coughs> And we name this material to just tint. And let's go ahead and drop that guy on here. And we can give this a sand and a normal here. There we go. And let's go down and change that tint color. And so you can see that all still works. Uh, so that's cool we can ship this to the user we can be done now um, but I just want to show off that it also tracks dependencies so if we come in here 
and we go ahead and realize like, hey, we really want to multiply 2x that shader, and we come back, it will compile the shader we just changed, but because of the dependencies, it will also recompile uh, and repackage that uh, package shader. So now we can just work as normal. We can just work on our dev shaders, and these will all be updated. Uh, any changes we make will be updated. And when we're done, uh, we, can, we can ship the source uh, to them. Uh, that would be a very nice thing to do, because then they can change it, and they can also uh, use the stack functionality and stuff. Uh, but if we don't want to, we could just ship the resulting shaders here, and everything would just work across all the SRPs. And so if I come over here to URP, um, it's now importing those changes that I just made. And we'll reload the scene because we saved it. And here we see the same thing running in URP uh, all set up. So uh, I'll just show this off really quick. Uh, it's not so much the focus of this video, but the way this project is set up is, is kind of cool. Um, the guys over at Needle Tools helped me do this. What I actually have is I have each of my projects in here in a package. And then, uh, I'll show you how this is set up. And then I have essentially a development branch here for each version of Unity that I'm checking things on. And it brings in through the package, the actual package here. And so this makes it very easy for me to work across all the SRPs and check things. Um, but, you know, the nice thing about better shaders is that uh, it's pretty much just going to work across these SRPs automatically for you, unless you're doing something custom to the SRP. Um, so yeah, I hope that uh, shows off how this, how this works. Uh, there's some uh, stuff you have to do to set up your project for this, which is all covered in the documentation. And um, yeah, it just makes it really easy to uh, write shaders again, to have users install them on their machine and not see uh, pink shaders when they first uh, open up your project. Uh, it'll just work regardless of which SRP it's on. I'm running in standard here. We just saw I made those changes, built those shaders, and then loaded it into URP. Everything just works uh, as you would expect. And uh, yeah, that uh, hopefully will make it very easy for other asset store developers to develop their shaders uh, using my system and, uh, and know that their uh, clients will um, have working shaders when they install and not have to unzip files and do all that kind of stuff. So, uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed.